Well, good afternoon, everybody. I, uh, those in the back, uh, I'd, I'd ask you to kindly come forward. This is such a special day in the city of Brock and the city of Champions, and I'm just so excited to be here as the mayor and as a Brocktonian. Um, in terms of um, starting off logistics, um, we, uh, we are just uh, so thankful, first of all, to the federal delegation, Congressman Stephen Lynch, Senator Ed Markey, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Without the efforts of the federal delegation, we wouldn't be here today, plain and simple. And President Joe Biden uh, as well, the efforts, the American rescue. Uh, it wasn't so long ago that Congressman Lynch came here himself and stood at this podium to talk about ARPA. And a lot of us didn't actually know what the ramifications at that time were because ARPA was still fluid in terms of what the regs and uh, restrictions would be and uh, I do want to first of all before we go into the agenda I want to thank uh, I see State Representative Jerry Cassidy representative thank you very much I know uh, Senator Mike Brady's in session today but Ed Mill, Ed Mill is here on his behalf but we do thank the senator I want to thank State Representative Michelle Dubois as well uh, for her uh, advocacy and uh, our unbelievable ambassador to Ireland, Claire Cronin. When Claire was the leader and state representative, she uh, was working tirelessly with the state delegation as well. So we do give a, a round of applause to Claire Cronin and what she's done. <laughs> Jack Lally, the city council president, is here. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for being here today. <laughs> Councilor Lodge, Rita Mendez, Councilor, thank you so much for being here as well. There are a lot of city, uh, and there's a few school folks here as well. We welcome the school folks here as well, right? Uh, but I, I just want to just take a moment to thank a few people that really worked tirelessly on this endeavor. And uh, CFO Troy Clarkson is here. I want to thank you, Troy, for what you do. I see Councilor Shirley is at Councilor. Thank you very much for being here as well, Councilor. Paul Romano works in Troy's office, and, and you can hold your applause right now until I say a few things, but I want to thank Paul Romano for his efforts. I want to thank Brady Winston in my office. Uh, she, along with Jasmine Bradshaw in my office, and attorney Greg Mathieu uh, in the solicitor's office. Uh, when ARPA money came to Brock, that we had to figure out, I committed from day one, I'm giving away two million bucks, right? Two million dollars is a lot of money. And my view as the mayor was, we want to maximize the return on investment. How are we going to disperse it? How are we going to really figure out the best practices to move forward? And so I charge those individuals to work collectively on a task to achieve success. And today that, that effort is achieved because this is a success right here. We have 41 dedicated organizations either based in the city of Brockton or providing services in the city of Brockton. And when you talk about $2 million, this is a game changer for a lot of these organizations, if not all of them. And I'm just really, really proud to be able to be here. So let me just, if I could, uh, let me thank again, um, special thanks to my chief of staff, Sidney Merrill. I want to thank uh, Davis and Perez in my office as well. I want to thank Jensen Denoys in my office and my whole team. Uh, they're not my staff, they're my team. And because when we were talking about the magnitude of this money, uh, I did lose a few nights of sleep over this because we're talking about a sizable amount of money, right? We're talking about 17, a little over 17 million that we already have in the bank and then another 17 coming in July and August. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, um, but I will tell you, the businessman in me says, okay, great, let's show, show me the money and then we're going to figure out how we're going to spend the money to really get the return on investment. Each and every one of you in this room uh, do yeoman's work every single day every single day. And when I took office January 6th of 2020, we had heard about COVID, right? COVID was in China, COVID was in Italy at that time, but it wasn't in the States. But I will say that each and every one of you uh, figured out how to work in collaboration uh, to achieve the end result, uh, providing services in a different way, right? None of us knew what Zoom was before COVID came here. Um, but I also know that what you do pre-COVID to what you do right now is different. The services are the same, but how you render those services are different, right? Close, churches needed to close, right? The congregation members weren't, weren't gonna be there. This building was closed. You wouldn't have been able to be here. But to be able to pivot was what makes the success achieved, right? And thinking outside the box is really a key component. So let me just say that 
many people came together and worked together to have the opportunity today. And I want to thank the 11 members of the City Council that have been nothing but wonderful advocates and partners on this endeavor. We had a two and a half hour conversation the other night on how we're going to spend ARPA. And even though today we're only talking about the two million, and I say only, um, that's two million dollars that I know is going to be spent to better Brockton and better the lives of Brocktonians. Young and old, gay and straight, white and black, it doesn't matter. You are going to take care of Brockton. And that's what you're charged to do, and that's what you've done, a lot of you, for generations. And, and some of you have done it, really, in the short term. And in terms of what I, I, I need to say is that um, it's a team effort, right? It's a team effort. And we were able to provide the resources by doing online training in multiple languages, right? I mean, Davison translated in Spanish, and Joseph Francois in my office, Haitian Creole, and Adelsa Mendez at the BRA did Cape Verdean Creole. And... Uh, you know, we, we provided three of these opportunities. We had the online application process. We did handouts in multiple languages. We did social media in multiple languages to really, really try to uh, maximize uh, the ability to get this money out. Now, unfortunately, um, not everybody that applied met the standards. They're not my standards. They're not Sullivan's standards. It's the federal standards. And so we've done it in a way I feel that is equitable and fair and it meets the law. And it really is going to be a big bang for the buck to benefit Brockton. And at this time, um, I'm going to have Mr. Clarkson. I call him tongue-in-cheek the money man. But uh, Troy Clarkson um, should be applauded for his efforts helping on opera. Troy and I just did a... Um, uh, a jaunt down to Washington, D.C. to talk and meet face-to-face -face with uh, Senator Ed Mark and Congressman Lynch, Congressman Bill Keating. I'm trying to get more money for Brockton, right? That's it, bottom line. And I was in yesterday at the State House. Thank you. Yeah. I was, um, we took a field trip to the State House yesterday, and, and Jerry and Michelle were in session, and, and, and Mike's there today. But we met for uh, an hour with Karen Polito, and Lieutenant Governor Polito loves Brockton. She loves Brockton. She's from Worcester, very similar to Brockton. Uh, she forged a wonderful relationship with the late Mayor Bill Carpenter, and it continues to this day. And so having a meeting yesterday with myself and the city planner, Rob May, and the CFO, Troy Clarkson, and Robert Jenkins, the executive director at the BRA, and Sidney Merrill, we don't do it just to say, hey, we want to go in and see the beautiful State House building. We do it for a, a purpose, and that's what you do every day. That's why when I look out, I, I see so many people here that I have um, forged a relationship. A lot of you I consider friends, and a lot of you I um, just take my hat off because you all have very, very difficult jobs. And COVID even ramped it up harder, right? So, you know, when I, when I look at it like a Vinnie Matarano with the YMCA, I mean, I used to shoot hoops there when I was a little kid. Friday night, we had CYO basketball, but that was in 88. So you, you flip ahead to 2022, different, different really type of issues that we're dealing with. And all of you, I mean, the Boys and Girls Club, I mean, uh, Mac Jones coming the other day to give a, 100 grand is, is just a game changer. And, you know, I, I am just so proud to say uh, we are the city of champions, right? We are the city of champions. And we are that because we work together each and every day. We don't always have to agree, right? We're humans. But the common core purpose is to better the lives of Brocktonians and the next generation, the boys and girls. And so, you know, Pastor Roberto helping uh, every day those facing homelessness in Brockton, that has a real value. And as a Christian, I say thank you for doing that. So at this point, I'm going to have the CFO please come up to the podium. Thank you, Mayor. It's a pleasure for me, really, to join all of you, uh, elected officials, members of the Brockton team, and of course, all of you who lift up this community every day. And that's really what this program is about. Uh, I say all the time when I present the budget to the City Council that a budget is the most important policy document of a community because it speaks to what the community values. Well, today, we get to see firsthand what this mayor and what this city values. And what it is, is the work that all of you do. This is our opportunity as a city to not only validate the work that you do, but to thank you for it and to help support the important work you're doing by dedicating $2 million 
and our federal ARPA funds to the varied work that all of you do. So on behalf of the mayor and the team that he mentioned, it really is my honor to help celebrate all of you together lifting up this community. This is indeed the city of champions. It's also my hometown. Uh, my parents were both raised in this city and when I had the opportunity a few years ago to come back here uh, and, and be part of the leadership team, it was not only a tremendous professional opportunity, but an opportunity for me to come home uh, and be part of making a difference in my hometown. So for many reasons, it really is an honor for me to be here today and support this program, support this mayor, and support our phenomenal team who really put this uh, package together. We will continue to work with you as we distribute this money uh, over the next several months and, and couple years. So remember this face if you have any issues or challenges. We are here to help you. Uh, this isn't a one and done. We're not gonna just hand out the money and walk away. We are here to support you. Some of your organizations are larger than others. And so some may need a little assistance in figuring out the reporting uh, and, and how to deal with some of the federal requirements. I assure you that this is a partnership that will last far beyond this ceremony. So thank you for all the work that you do and uh, thank you for being part of this wonderful effort. And just to, to kind of follow up on what Troy just said about you know folks here at City Hall helping the organizations, I think that was proven many, many times during the application process. We had a lot of uh, calls and emails because it was confusing. It's confusing, right? And so we're all in this together. And so we will continue to do that. You know, we have support systems in place, uh, you know, and we'll, we really will continue to do that. And again, there's checks and balances, you know, that dispersed over the quarters. Um, but I'm really excited to say that um, today is a game changer. Today is an important day in the history of the city of Brockton. Um, I do also just want to give a quick synopsis if I could. Although my kids say I talk too long, so do this, okay, if you want me to stop talking. Um, you know, the story begins really like uh, any municipality in the Commonwealth, 351 of them, uh, COVID-19. We heard of the word, we weren't really sure what the ramifications would be. You know, would it be similar to the flu? Or would it be something that hadn't been here in a century? Well, unfortunately, we planned for the worst and we got the worst. Um, you know, as a result of the pandemic, um, American economy, uh, businesses started closing. The, the economy was just disrupted wholeheartedly. Um, a lot of citizens and residents lost their jobs and unfortunately lost a lot of their, their lives here in the city of Brockton. As I stand here, the death count is 494 residents that have perished. Um, and we, we've had over 20,000 people that have come down with COVID. In response, of course, President Biden uh, launched the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, as we call it. And the whole purpose was to help uh, recover, rebuild and recover. And in Brockton, um, again, we, we are receiving 34.5, a little over 34.5 million in two tranches. The next tranche will be here in July, early August. The whole goal, and my goal as mayor was to be able to enhance the community, enhance the organizations for decades to come. As I say, as a dad of three kids, it's for the next generation. And um, you know, it's extremely vital to hear on a regular basis from the residents and the business owners. And I know every elected official here uh, understands, you know, we serve at the will of the constituencies. And our goal as public servants is to try to help them on a daily basis, try to help lives. And, your organizations do the exact same thing. And it doesn't mean um, anything if, if, it's, if it's not done for the right reasons. And everybody here does it for the right reasons. Some are large scale, doing it uh, you know, with a magnitude of employees, and some do it really small scale. But the core principle is to help, to help. And so I do want to again just thank uh, Paul Armano in the finance department, because Paul, he himself created the opera survey. And it did consist of nine questions. Some people say, well, they were simple questions. I didn't think they were that simple, but it really helped us to determine really what are the needs of the community and how we can address uh, you know, the best usage of the funds. And I will tell you that I hosted the Mass Municipal Association, the MMA conference recently. We had 21 different mayors from the Commonwealth come to Brockton. And we were talking about opera and not one mayor had considered doing a survey application online. They just hadn't thought of it. 
Now, I hope and I pray that when they left the War Memorial that day, they went to their own cities and figured out how to generate it because it really is a game changer. It's the right way to do it. Uh, it's fair across the board, and it's the best way, in my humble opinion, to disperse a sizable amount of money. Um, I've always talked about, it didn't matter if I was a city councilor or a volunteer member of the planning board or now as mayor, I always talk about teamwork and collaboration teamwork and collaboration, and I mean that. Um, we are better together, right? Working with a common purpose and making sure that Brockton is uh, poised for greatness. The number one asset of Brockton is the people, right? We know that. And I said this the other day with the mayors, Brockton is not wealthy in terms of looking at our financial ledger, which is not, but we're wealthy with people. And we've always been that way, right? We're a diverse community of hardworking, dedicated people. Dedicated people that understand that COVID has changed us forever, emotionally, physically, financially. We're just changed, right? My own children are not the same kids before COVID as they are now. And mental health issues have been enhanced. And, and, and if you were sober, it's not good to be home alone, isolated. It's a recipe for disaster. So of course, domestic violence went up and alcohol and drug abuse went up. We just know that. And so to be able to provide services to help people is what it's about, right? And so I am saying today that um, the nonprofit partners and faith-based organizations really deserve a round of applause for what they do every day, but more importantly, what they did to Brock and what they continue to do during COVID. As someone that's not medically trained, I happen to, to marry a woman that, uh, Brock Tony, and I went to medical school, but I don't know anything about medicine. I just don't. And so what I do know is you go to people that do. So on day one of my administration, when my wife Maria said, hey, Bob, you better think about this thing called COVID-19. I remember calling people saying, hey, this is Mayor Sullivan. Some people didn't know who I was. Where, where are you, Mayor? I said, Mayor Brockton. I'm, I'm the Mayor of Brockton. Um, I invited them upstairs and uh, we did a round table. And the whole purpose was to try to figure out how we can plan. And I do want to say that um, I can be very blunt at times, right? What you see is what you get. And what I said is this is not about competition. I don't care if it's Good Sam versus Brockton Hospital VA. This is about, put that aside, this is about trying to figure out how we can work together to save lives and help Brockton. And every single one of those organizations and the hospitals and Neighborhood Health Center and Father Bill's Mainspring and High Point and the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club and all the pastors and churches, they all understood that. And every single one of the groups from the Cape Verdean Association to Haitian Community Partners to Latin Women's Association to the Angolan Association, they all said, whatever you need, Mayor, we're there, you know? PAC uh, came and, and helped us out. And, you know, we, we as a community, we as a city, I think we learned a really valuable lesson. I know growing up in Brockton that I was always proud to say I'm from Brockton, Massachusetts. A lot of people would look at me and say, you in a gang? What do you, what do, you do? You're from Brockton? I'm like, yeah, you're damn right I'm from Brockton. And it's a great place to grow up. And it's a great place to really stay. And that's why my wife and I, we stayed in Brockton. And thank God I have my parents here. My in-laws are still with us. And so a lot of you have the same roots that I have. I'm looking at, at the city clerk, Tim Cruz. And I thank you, clerk, for what you do every day. Um, you know, and a lot of you are transplants to Brockton. And really, you know, there's someone in this room that knew me when I was running around Wellington Street wearing a diaper, Pat Kelleher. And uh, Pat raised her family on Wellington Street and she never gave up on Brockton. She just didn't, right? And helping women and helping youth and children. And so today, when I talk about the 41 remarkable organizations uh, in the City of Champions, um, think about that. 41 organizations are getting $2 million. And it really is my pleasure right now to just uh, read off the names. I do want to just say that um, I don't actually have the checks here today, right? I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you 100 grand or 50 grand right now. But I would tell you that the CFO's office will be working diligently with you. Um, but it really, if, if you could hold your applause, I'm just going to read the names. And these are just wonderful, wonderful groups that help each and every day 
to better the lives of Brocktonians. So thank you. So let me read off. All of these are the uh, applications and the applicants that have achieved um, a winning score and have met all the federal standards. And I just want to say thank you for applying. Um, and the Opera Grant Fund's uh, recipients are as follows. Adult and Teen, Teen Challenge, Massachusetts. Authentic Caribbean Foundation, Inc. Bad Girls for Christ. Bamsey. Boys and Girls Club of Metro South. Brockton Area Arc, Inc. Brockton Arts, Inc. Brockton Day Nursery, Inc. Brockton Farmers Market. Brockton Symphony Orchestra, Brockton Tabernacle, Inc., Cape Verdean Women United, Catholic Charitable Bureau of the Archdiocese of Boston, Inc., Charity Guild, Central United Methodist Church, Choices for Teens Mentoring Group, Christ Apostolic Church Overcomers Center, Collaborative Parent Leadership Action Network, Diocese of the Mayor and St. Teresa Marianite Catholic Church, DW Field Park Association, Educational Divide Reform, EMH Recovery Inc., Family and Community Resources, Father Bills and Mainspring Inc., Free the Captives Ministry Inc., Friends and Mentors Inc., Haitian Community Partners, Gandara Mental Health Center, Inc., Health Imperatives, Code Connect, Inc., New Fellow Christian Ministries, Old Colony YMCA, People Affecting Community Change, PACC, Pinnacle Partnerships Corporation, Resilient Roses Respite, Rose Conservatory, School on Wheels, Song Keepers Limited, The Voice Inc., Universal Charitable Foundation, and finally, the VFW Post 1046 Auxiliary. Let's give a round of applause for them. So as I opened up this, uh, this event ceremony, um, I will conclude with the following. Um, Continue to do which every single day what you do. Stay the cause, stay the mission. Uh, we have to roll up our sleeves and get the job done, right? We have a difficult job, but it's easier when we work together. And uh, you know, this is a step of many steps. Uh, we uh, hope to get additional funding. Uh, there's additional ARPA money that Plymouth County has been uh, recipients of, and Brockton is the only city in Plymouth County. So we will get some additional money there as well. Um, you know, and we're going to keep banging the drum. Uh, Representative Cassie, Representative Dubois, Senator Brady are doing it every single day up on Beacon Hill. And so, um, again, the way we will disperse it, all of you know the process, but it's going to be done in four tranches, done in quarterly uh, installments. Um, and again, Paul and his team with Troy uh, will continue to work with you, but more importantly, work for you. So at this time, I just want to say uh, let's spend the money in the best, uh, best way we can do it. And uh, let's continue to make sure we stay the course for a healthier, safer, united Brockton, Massachusetts. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.